What's up guys, this is Chetty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be kicking off the Angular course. People have been asking for the Angular course and I'm excited to make it because I'm excited to code in some, I like to, here's my uh, philosophy on software development. You know what the best software framework, whatever is? The best framework is the one that pays you and Angular still to this day, it's not the coolest, it's not the new, it's not the hot fuzz, it's not React. Um, I know that everybody wants to code in React right now, but there's still tons of Angular jobs everywhere. And um, I've talked to, I talked about it a long time ago, but even still to this day, you co Angular puts food in, you know, food in people's mouths. If you just need a job and you're a self-taught developer, Angular is going to be perfect for you because there's no competition and there's still a tremendous need for Angular developers in the enterprise world, especially. Enterprise pays a lot. So once again, .NET and Java are in kind of that realm too. .NET and Java are very enterprisey, and Angular is very enterprisey as well too. And both of those smushed together, you've got a recipe for a really high paying job. I am still a .NET Angular developer. Um, I always have like kind of marketed myself as that more .NET, but I do code in Angular too. And you, a year into software development, you'll be making hundreds of thousands of dollars, full benefits really big perks, huge sign on bonus. So like I said, if you really want a job, Angular is kind of where you want to be in 20, still 2022. And I'll just talk about the brief history. We can, okay, so it used to be called Angular JS, but they changed it to Angular because they switched the whole entire language over to TypeScript. That's like the whole entire idea, you know, about it. You really don't need to know much more than that. But Angular JS is a totally different breed of animal, and if you see Angular JS, you can instantly recognize it because it's not TypeScript. So if you see some really funky-looking Angular out there on the internet, it's probably it's probably uh, Angular JS. And this is where we kick off, where we actually install. And as we install it, I'm going to go over the Angular architecture and tell you kind of how all of this stuff is smushed together. So what you want to do is if you haven't already, and I'm assuming you're probably a web developer and you know how to work the internet. So if you know how to do those things, uh, just go to node and install the whichever operating system that you need. So if you're, um, if you're on a Mac, it's on Mac, you, you get the picture. We don't, we don't need to talk about that. Uh, the next thing that we need to do, and this kind of gets a little bit involved, and I'm using VS Code, feel free to use WebStorm, feel free to use Visual Studio if you want to, but I'm gonna be ripping it up on Visual Studio Code. And I'm also gonna be showing you all the extensions that I use and all of the things that are going to make your life a lot easier. So, let's see, I'm getting a little out of breath here. I'm just gonna try and sit here and catch my breath for a second. So, First, what we need to do is we need to install, we need to type this into the command line. And I think I already have TypeScript installed. So if you don't, uh, make sure you also install uh, TypeScript as well. And while I'm here, let's go ahead, let's type in, see what version of NPM that we have. Um, this is crazy, but I might not even have, yeah, I don't even have notes installed on this computer. so. I'm going to have to install Node, as weird as that sounds. I forgot that I, I've been coding on my Mac here recently. I forgot that I don't even have Node installed on here, which is crazy. And I've also been out of the JavaScript world so long that, once again, I, I just didn't install Node. That's, that's pretty sweet. Okay, so we're going to go through here. Don't automatically install the necessary, do not install Chocolatey. That's another, that's another gotcha. So don't install Chocolatey. Then let's go over here, and I'm actually gonna have to close down Visual Studio Code because if you don't, it will not show up in the command line. So we're gonna go here. Go ahead, click the finish button. And that should be it. So Okay, so now Node is installed. Now what we need to do is we actually need to install Angular. 
And once you have node installed, you have this thing called NPM. Once again, I'm sure you understand what NPM is if you are watching a Angular tutorial, but what we need to install globally is the Angular CLI. And I believe that TypeScript will be included as well in this, but might not. So we might have to actually go back and install TypeScript. Okay, so TypeScript is installed. Now what we need to do is we need to post this command right here. And if you're actually looking, wondering like what I am looking at, because I'm actually in like in following this tutorial, I'm going through the docs and it says here that you want to, and I've actually encountered this before. If you're in PowerShell, which is Windows, you want to execute this right here or else you're gonna get some errors. So we we'll go, go ahead and do that. Now what we need to do is we actually need to create the folder. And I'm actually, if you're already in a uh, folder for another project, you probably want to exit out of it. But I am going to ls here and I'm going to cd. And I just have a folder for dummy projects and YouTube projects. And I'm just going to cd into regular projects. Once we actually do that, what we want to do is we want to type in ng. And I honestly, like, I do not know why they call it ng, but that's what they do. And we are just going to call this my app because this isn't going to be a real app yet. What this is going to be is just a little playground so that I can show you how all of this stuff works. And I say yes, just give Google some analytics. They're probably harvesting all of my data and having people steal my credit cards, but whatever. We'll worry about that later. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we want, just regular CSS. We don't need SAS or less. If you do, if you want that, please click that. And then what's going to happen is it's going to install pretty much um, a whole data center worth of data onto our computers, and it's going to take a really long time. And in the meantime, I am going to stop first. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go take a break real quick and get some water. My voice is getting raspy and I will see you guys once this thing is installed. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit of architecture. I promised you guys I was gonna talk about architecture. Let's start off with modules. Uh, modules are probably the biggest way to group code. If you were to create another module you would have you would do it for maybe like an admin or a dashboard or maybe some type of really big feature and the re biggest reason that we have modules and we can, and there's like node modules and those are totally different but within the context of angular you have modules when you would have maybe like a dashboard so within our app we would have next to it we would have a dashboard and you can tell these modules by the app.ts module. The app.ts module is what's going to create this. And when you create your very own module of your own, what you're gonna do is come in here and you're going to do some type of, you're going to do a type of configuration to do it, but we're gonna save that for another video. We're just concerned about the high level overview and then lazy loading. So obviously an admin dashboard is a totally different feature from like the actual app dashboard. So what it's going to do is it's going to load them separately. So if the app is just loaded, it's not going to load the admin and that saves up a lot of processing power and makes it so that your app is a lot faster. So the next thing that you have is components. Components are similar to what components are in a React app. If you've ever coded in React, it's basically like a breakable piece of like your app and even smaller than a module and it's only done so on the ui so what would be a good example of a component this right here would be a comp this would this would be a component inside of angular and then this is probably react it could be angular i don't know and then this would be its own component and a net like a nav bar we'll go to the i'll show you the angular docs a nav bar would be an angular component this would be an angular component and it makes it so that you can break apart your app and kind of tackle things one by one um, it also has a one-way data flow which we'll talk about in the next video after this one also immutable state that's a very big term that you're going to hear a lot in angular and something that we will talk about but just for uh, a brief overview so directives 
whenever you see an if statement, and maybe I can actually find one here in um, Angular. No, I don't think that there actually is one in here right now, but uh, directives are going to be pretty much ng if. So you'll see this, you'll see turn it, ng, ng if, now uh, ng if, and then you would have a closing tag. And if ng if is equal to true, then that's going to be a directive. And that's pretty much the, the gist of directives. There's also ng model, and this is how you actually tap into the lower parts of the DOM. So normally, whenever you are controlling the DOM in JavaScript, you're going to have to worry about kind of doing low level stuff, but Angular abstracts all of that away and makes it so that you don't have to interact with any of that stuff. Hence why people are starting to want to be more in Angular and React these days as opposed to just regular JavaScript. It's a lot more abstracted. So pipes, pipes are going to allow you to do very simple things like turn a, a actual ISO date, like a very long string date that you would see in uh, like maybe in a database somewhere unless you turn it into like a really readable string like March 3rd, 2022. Services, this is probably the most important part. Services are what are going to allow you to get data from an API. Um, services also follow a repository pattern, which is a big reason why people tend to love uh, Angular and .NET and in Java. People love the service pattern. I'm a huge fan of it, and it's really easy to switch back and forth in between these two patterns if you're a .NET or a Java developer. Um, React uh, Angular Router... React Router is totally separate in React, but in Angular, it's already built in and it's already part of the actual architecture. Super powerful, um, a great uh, way to be able to control your web page and do authorization and prevent people from going to web pages and have a lot of more control over your app. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So if you guys enjoyed this introduction and you're ready for the next part of the course, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.